Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and uh, today I wanted to give you a quick update on the NS Panel Pro because um, I think since my last video there has been a few version updates or firmware updates made to this uh, device especially now or most recently uh, version 1.3.0 has come out and this contains a couple of new features and a couple of um, well improvements and bug fixes as well not all the things that are fixed that I mentioned in my previous video, but then some fixed and some new things got added. So before I go, I just quickly want to summarize what is new in this feature. First of all, it supports new Zigbee devices. So for example, it supports uh, uh, IKEA throat free lamps. So if you look at this one, this is an IKEA lamp and I can control it from here. And as you can see, I can control the brightness as well and I can control the, uh, the color temperature as well. And there are a few other uh, lights that are supported. So there are a couple of Yi lights, the, uh, models that are um, just white lights, but also, uh, you know, color lights as well. And actually the IKEA lights and also the Philips Hue lights were already uh, supported in the earlier version, 1.2.0. So in 1.3.0, there are more Yi lights are added. There is also added support for a Wi-Fi uh, S40 plug, which I don't have, so I, can, I can't really show that to you. And since the last video, I started adding new Zigbee devices. So for example, you can see that I've added the Sonoff temperature and the humidity sensor. Uh, so that has its own screen and you will always get a last 24 hours graph uh, based on the uh, temperature and the humidity readings. So you can't really change any of these like uh, go to like a different format or a different um, time scale. It just shows you and you can pick on the screen and you can see the actual values as well. And it's quite smart because it shows the minimum and the maximum values. So you can see it here. I'm sure that when you change the uh, temperature units then this would change to Fahrenheit as well but uh, this is what you get and definitely this information is stored on the device because if I um, power off or power cycle the NS Panel Pro then this the chart starts from the beginning so this is not something which is stored in the cloud and by the way if you go into the thermostat screen you see the same graph here as well but um, this particular thermostat is linked to my TH10 which is not uh, not online at the moment. So this is why I can't, well, I can access the, the graph screen, but it doesn't show anything because the device is not on. As you can see, this is a quite a small area on the screen, so it's uh, difficult to click. But um, that's uh, also, I noticed that it got added to the thermostat screen as well. Uh, also, what we have is a couple of improvements in the language section. So here in the language, uh, the couple of new languages were added, so now we have German, Polish, Swedish and Ukrainian that were added in the uh, latest upgrade. So if you need any of those languages now you can do. And also in the settings when you do change the volume, uh, then you get a preview of that volume. Just like in mobile phones that when you change the volume it shows you a sample. So these are the improvements that they highlighted in the, um, in the release notes, but I'm sure that there are some other small bits and pieces. For example, I, I think I'm in a previous video, I complained about the weather is not working, it just defaults, uh, or after some time you just stop updating the weather forecast. It definitely works now, so I'm always getting the weather forecast. Maybe what I can say that it, maybe the update frequency is a little bit less than what I would expect. Sometimes in the morning if I come to work the sun is already up but I'm still getting a uh, like a moon shape um, <clears throat> icon uh, suggesting that it is still the weather update a couple of hours ago when the sun was below the horizon. But um, I mean certainly in general it shows me the weather that I you know that I see outside. I also had issues in the past that the manual scenes were not updated correctly, so this is definitely working. Uh, I showed you in a previous video that I um, set these up in my app and then it, is, uh, it wasn't synchronizing, but now it is definitely working. So all the screens that you have are working as expected. I'm still struggling a little bit with the cameras, so my... Um, Sonoff camera, which is the one which is called a camera. It is working flawlessly, so it shows me the feed and, you know, I can do, I can use uh, two-way audio, so everything is working fine. 
but when I when it comes to some of my RTSP cameras they are still not working so it loads the first frame and then it just freezes so it doesn't show me a live view of that camera and I was talking to Sonoff about this and they asked me if uh, my camera is using um, H.264 because that's the only thing that they support and my camera is using that and I also tried with another camera and it is the same issue although they, this is also a reeling camera so if there is any particular thing in the reeling feed then well I wouldn't expect one of them to work and the other one not but uh, probably this is something that they will be working on in the future as well I also mentioned in the previous video that my ESP32 cam wasn't working it was just showing a single frame and it was uh, blinking but they confirmed that they only support the ESP32 cam if the image URL is either in port 81 or 82 and for me it's port 80 so this is why it wasn't working um, and I don't remember if the standard firmware works on port 81 or 82 and I have changed it to 80 or maybe I need to just do it again and then specify a different port and by the way the reason I'm just showing you the NS panel and not showing my phone because I haven't really found anything uh, in the phone app or in the phone screen that has been changed in this firmware so most of the changes are on the NS panel itself not so much in the EVLink application but that's pretty much it. The one thing I want to talk about the firmware update is that, you know, when you come to the settings screen or when you actually come to this screen, sometimes you have a red dot on the settings, just like in iOS, uh, showing you that there is something that um, you need to pay attention to. And then you scroll down to about, you also see a dot here. And then this is uh, where you see a dot for the OS version. So the app, I think the app version is updated automatically, but the OS version is not. So that's the operating system so the firmware update for the Android uh, subsystem which is working on this device so and that doesn't get updated automatically so you always have to come here and then if there is a dot you can click here you get a confirmation screen whether you want to update or not and that screen is also a little bit frustrating because you have to click confirm and nothing happen and and then you can click confirm again and still nothing happen I guess what is happening in the background is when you click confirm for the first time it downloads the new firmware but it may, may take like 20 or 10 or 20 minutes or even longer so um, and during that time nothing really happens so what I would do what I would suggest is that you click on confirm and then you maybe come back after an hour and you click confirm again and that actually then it's going to do the firmware update on the NS panel but um, yeah and again you don't get a notification on this on the app you don't get a notification unless you come to at least to this screen so I'm guessing the best way is just to you know come to this screen you know once a month and then make sure that you have uh, or well make sure that you don't have any notifications here to update the OS and to be honest for me it still feels like that this is uh, this uh, NS panel pro is probably more like a room controller than a central controller so I would imagine that uh, um, you would have multiple of these NS panel pros in the house and in those cases I think the fact that each of them has a Zigbee radio and how the uh, sorry the alarm function is going to work across the devices I think that's an interesting topic so um, I'm I, I hope I can explore this a uh, little bit in the future maybe if, if I would have two NS Panel Pros and then see how it works uh, in terms of the Zigbee and some of the other settings like for example if I have this uh, IKEA lamp linked to this NS Panel Pro and if I have another NS Panel Pro would I be able to you know um, operate it from here or just like uh, all the other sensors would I be able to see the temperature history on my other NS Panel uh, if I have two at the home or for example if I set up the alarm functions here would the same functions work on the other NS Panel Pro as well I think for the uh, for the Zigbee stuff uh, like in terms of the devices I think the answer is yes so you can see uh, all your Zigbee devices across uh, all your NS panels um, within your account but I think the alarm settings that could be specific to the you know the the panel that you are setting this up on which uh, uh, I mean I think it would give you a couple of um, interesting scenarios but I think in most cases you would want to be able to disable or enable the alarm 
in any of your NS panels that you have around the house. So I think that could be a little bit awkward to, to set up and configure, but maybe it's not that complicated. And of course, you know, once they have the two, like the intercom functionality that um, I was told that is coming later this year, that would definitely mean that people will end up buying multiple NS panels in their house if, they, <clears throat> if that's the feature that they are looking for. But other than that, I think that would be all for today. If you are interested in the NS panel, I have links in the video description. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.